I got the idea of the way they're thinking. Then what I would do, I think two of you guys ask about this, develop a scope for the leader. This all revolves around the, 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 I mean, really the focus and the success of this ministry is going to depend on the person that's in charge of it. Um, I will tell you, there's two reasons in my experience why security ministries fail. One is because there's focus only on providing physical protection. And that, that's part of the mission, but that's not necessarily part of the ministry, if that makes sense. The other is um, someone will take this on in the beginning, and then what happens is they get overwhelmed because, and I'm going to get into this, there is a lot of work in doing this. Um, you know, I mean, I spend as much time at Fellowship Bible Church as I do at work. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a staff member here. But it's kind of like a part-time thing, but you know, I'm, I mean, I've, you know, my, my work week starts on Friday and it ends on Monday night. I've been here now today. I got here at eight o'clock this morning. I'm still here. I was dealing with church fellowship business before, uh, did a presentation, did some other church business, came back and doing this with you guys. And when I finish, there's a couple other things I need to do for the church and I'll be here tomorrow. And it's all got to do with security ministry. So, uh, when you know when we start to look at like the scope for the leader, this all focuses on them. Okay, mute folks if you're not there. Uh, ask a question. Hold on. Right. So here is the, when we talk about scope for the leader. The success again is based on the dedicated lead. And the big thing with the lead, whether they know it or not, you know, they have to have a servant's heart. Here's what that means. They're going to put the needs of others first. Number one, they're going to put the needs of the security team members of the security ministry uh, members first. So they're going to be worried about how they get trained and qualified. They're going to worry about like what the standards are going to look like. They're going to worry about like how food is going to get ordered during training. If that's some of the things you do, they're going to be worried about like reserving space they're going to be worried about the training qual qualification plan. They're going to be concerned with, like, how are they going to get resources? So, you know, this person is going to have to put the needs of the actual function of this in the ministry first. Um, and then serve with the right motivation. And the motivation for this is service. You know, the motivation doesn't need to be, I'm going to get to carry a gun when I'm at church, you know, and I'm going to get to be in charge of a bunch of people that are carrying guns and tell people about it. That is, that is not the right motivation to do this. If that's the case, it will not, this will not last. Um, and then, you know, there's, again, like I've talked about this, there's a required time to dedicate to the ministry. And so I don't care if you're even a small church, understand that weekly you're going to have to dedicate a certain amount or a specific amount of time out to what you're doing. And if, if the ministry is successful, so if you're doing all these other things, you get involved with things on the outside and you, you're fellowshipping outside of the church as a ministry, you're going to get even busier. And so as you develop that scope for the leader, um, just kind of, you know, you need to kind of figure out, you know, look for the kind of person that's going to want to do this. Uh, and the church is going to want this to last. If they approve this and they get the budget approved, which we're going to talk about later on, then, you know, they're going to want this to be successful. And this is all, it, this just really based, is going to be based on who's in charge of it, okay? Um, because the church doesn't have the time to lead it. So if they figure you've appointed a leader and that leader doesn't, doesn't do the job, like the church is not going to have the time or resources to pick up the slack. You know, they're dealing with other, other ministries and they have other issues. Once I have developed the scope and I've, you know, I've figured this out, then what I want to do, so, so we've, we've taken this to them, we've given the church the idea. When we gave the church the idea for, you know, to get them to get interested and to have us to move forward or even get the approval process, I, you know, I, you know, showed you that process of kind of, you know, what that ministry process looks like, like that project plan. So then, you know, we've now developed the scope for the lead, which is somebody with a servant's heart, they're going to put the team first. They're going to want to serve for the right reasons, right? They're going to want to do this for the right reasons. Now we want to find and appoint a lead. Okay? Now, as you do this, you might have already found the person. You might be the person, okay? Um, but, you know, if not, if you're just the, you know, if you're an elder 
or you're a leader in the church or you, you lead another ministry and this has come up and you've helped, you know, you're the genesis for this idea, then you want to go find somebody. So communicate the need to the body. This would be a case if you don't already have somebody, maybe you go out to the body and you tell them, hey, listen, uh, we've met with the church. We, we have found out that there is a need for a security ministry. We are looking for a leader. Go back to the scope of what we just talked about and say, look, this is the kind of person we're looking for. And if you're interested, uh, contact us here or let us know, you know, you know, call us, send us an email, come see us after service and tell us that you're interested and we're going to walk you through the process. So once you've communicated that need, uh, you know, as people start to come forward, what you need to do is communicate the expectations. Okay. So the expectations are, again, we're talking about, it's going to take time. We need somebody that's going to want to serve the church and serve the people in the ministry and also serve people outside the ministry. We're going to get into that with a successful ministry, uh, especially for security or safety, what that looks like. It looks like all the rest of them. Okay. Um, when I look at appointing a lead, what I'm looking for when we start to talk about traits and abilities. So, um, you know, when I start to look at that person who has a servant's heart, now we got to put, you know, we got to do this leadership thing. You know, we're going to have to find somebody, you know, not that just wants to serve the church and serve the people, but also somebody that's got the traits and abilities to be able to make this thing successful. Um, you know, this is about prayer and God's going to lead us through it. But, you know, uh, you know, God expects us to do our part in this. And so here's what this looks like. Number one, I need, I need somebody or the church is going to need somebody that can identify objectives and tasks. So what needs to be done? This in leadership, this is, What's the problem? Like, you know, what's the problem? What's the objective? How are we going to solve the problem? That's really all this is. So they can identify objectives and tasks for the ministry, how to get this off the ground, how to keep it running, how to retain. Number two, um, you know, I will tell you as somebody that's led groups and, you know, just because of my personality and the way that I was raised, um, you know, delegation for a long time, especially here, because I was in a different environment, was very, it was like it was kind of tough for me to kind of, figure that out because, you know, when I, what I learned from the security ministry when I put this together was I didn't want police officers. I didn't want a bunch of military guys. I, I just didn't want that. If they came forward to serve, it was okay. If they were, they did that in a former life. But my focus on choosing the ministry was people who had servants hearts and who loved the church and who were willing to serve. That was the first objective. And so as the ministry got bigger, I had to start delegating things. I had to start putting team leads out. I had to start putting people in charge of uh, ministries we were doing outside of the security ministry. And so delegation is a big piece of it because as this grows, the leader won't be able to, you know, he's not going to be able or she won't be able to handle all of it. So they're going to have to be able to delegate to other leaders. So they're going to they're gonna have to create other leaders. Um, number three, they need to be encouraging. Um, and so, um, as you, you know, you guys have probably all already gone through this process. Um, when we start recruiting members, uh, every time we do that, there will, there'll be someone that will come up, um, and they'll want to do it, but there's always something on the backside. There's there uh, in their mind as we start to, uh, and I'll talk about this later on, as we start to communicate the expectations, sometimes people need to be encouraged to be a part of this. Um, and, uh, so taking some advice from my brother-in-law six years ago, as I asked some questions, the comment that I got was sometimes people would rather just write a check than get involved. And it's not that they're bad or that they're horrible sinners because we're all sinners. It's just, that's the way sometimes it works. And so sometimes we have to motivate people to be a part of this. So they come to the interest meeting, which we'll get into, or they come and ask a question this person needs to be able to encourage those people to take that next step to volunteer, to get on the ministry and, and to see what this is all about. So they have to be encouraging. They also have to be encouraging when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, the, the ministry that's already in place. Uh, sometimes people want to leave. Sometimes people have problems at home. Um, you know, just there's a number of things that are going to happen that you're going to, that this leader is going to be personally involved with. And so they have to be able to get out there. I used to say motivate. You got to get out there and motivate. You got to lead these people. In this environment, it's encouraged. It's the same thing because a leader, all a leader is doing is, uh, you know, a manager, you know, a, anybody can manage that's, you know, trying to meet, you know, some sort of an organizational goal, you know, based off of some sort of a guideline. But really what a leader is doing is they are, they're encouraging. 
um, through example, they're getting people to do things. All right. And so, um, you got to you got to be an encourager. You got to get out there, motivate them. You got to lead them. You got to got to get them in the seat. Got to get got to get them out there. Got to get them trained, and then you got to bring them in. You got to get here to serve, and you got to encourage to do that. Okay. The person also has to be a good recruiter, and and I will tell you, uh, like you're going to have to be a teacher at some point, right? You know the, I mean, really, the whole purpose of a ministry is for the ultimate teacher. <laughs> it's Jesus. Jesus who is the ultimate teacher. And so I will tell you the best leaders, uh, you know, to a point, number one, they're able to go out there and recruit and talk to people, and they're able to teach too. And I, that doesn't mean they have to teach like fighting or shooting because we could get we could delegate that to somebody else, but they but they need to teach people about what the ministry is about and what's important. So be able to recruit and teach. Um you got to be dedicated, man. Your, your heart has to be in this to make this last. Um, I will, I'll be the first to tell you, if someone's, this is a big ministry, and it's been going on almost, I think, almost six years. Yeah, it's 2015. And there are times I get, I get tired, but you would have to kill me probably to drag me away from it. And so, you know, because my heart's in it, because this is my thing. I love it. I, the service part of it, dealing with the people, I get frustrated. I get angry sometimes. I get frustrated at the church, um, but that's a big part of the heart. Like what that means that you're going to stick with it. The leader is going to stick with it no matter what. And the leader also has to be able to set the pace. They have to understand when to slow down, and they have to understand when to speed up. Okay? Any questions about finding and appointing a leader and some of those traits and abilities that that leader needs to have? <laughs> Any comments about that? Any experiences? You've experienced something different? Anything? Uh, Mike, real quick. Uh, this is uh, James Wright. Um, as you were speaking, um, I, I think one of the things that jumped out uh, that um, for me, uh, I'm not going to say uh, for others on the uh, on the call uh, on the Zoom, but one of the things that stuck out as you were as you were speaking. Um, is that the uh, the security team is a ministry component of the overall ministry, and it's not a um, uh, an an ad hoc uh, a committee, if you will. And so, when you when you talked about uh, qualifications uh, and finding and appointing the lead, what jumped out at me when you said recruit and teach was I immediately thought about Second Timothy the second chapter twenty four and twenty five. Uh, that the servant of the Lord uh, must be uh, apt to teach uh, and be hospitable, basically to all men. Uh, so that 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 is that, that's really important. That jumped out at me. No, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. I, absolutely. When I, you know, as I put this together and was trying to, you know, come up with a good outline for you guys, and you know, so you guys can be successful and put your ministries out there. I mean, really, it is. I mean, teaching. You know, the ultimate teacher is Jesus. And so, you know, if we're, if we're trying to follow in the, you know, if we're trying to follow that, this, this lead has got to be out there and teach. And again, that doesn't mean teach hand and stuff. It's just the ministry piece of it to teach, to teach the servants what it is that we need to do. So we yeah, absolutely, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, anything else, any, you know, these are things that have worked here and, uh, but that, that seem to have worked other places, any other comments or, you know, anything different with anybody else or any questions about you know what we've talked about so far this is important because i will I, what I, you know um the churches are missing a man i just like i get i get really motivated about it the churches are missing a huge opportunity with these security ministries like i don't think they see it yet i really don't think they understand the uh, opportunity uh especially for men because you know uh sometimes we just have a we have a problem with submitting because of our personalities. We have a problem with sitting still. We have a problem with service in the church because a lot of times, it's been my experience, it's very hard for men to find a place to serve in the church because it it doesn't, uh, you know, part of a ministry is also fulfilling a need that we have inside of us. You know, we are serving other people, but, you know, we're serving Jesus. And so there's something that we're trying to fill too. And so, you know, I, it, the churches, I think, that don't have them, it, it, it is the reason why this is so important is because they're missing the mark 
And a lot of times I think they miss the mark because we probably just don't communicate effectively. So uh, I say all that to say, because I, I do, I'm like, you know, I, I get fired up over it. Like, ask questions. Ask, I'll talk about this all night because uh, this we really need to get this out there, especially like right now is a crucial time for the church. We shut the church down. The world, you know, this world, our world, our Christians hurting. The, you know, we, you know, we really need to be, we really need to be the, the comforting piece you know, for the body, and the body's been away, they've been on, you know, these streaming services, and it's hard to get people back in, like, I, you know, I had, to, I was in the worship center today, because our team lead was out, and, I, like, our, our sanctuary is starting to get crowded again, like, it, mo like, I saw it, and it, like, brought me to tears, because I've been angry, I really have it, you know, because we closed down, and we shut the church down, and we kind of, not, not meaning to, because of, you know, what was going on, I think that, We've, we've missed some fellowship, and with that, this is a great opportunity. If we can get this word out there to show these churches what this really is, this is a huge opportunity to get, especially men, to serve and get servants out there and get people back inside, you know, get the body back inside the church. So, uh, anyway, um, so, man, I, I appreciate that comment. Thank you.